Naš sledeći govornik je gospodin Kevin Maynell iz organizacije Internet Society. Oni su pre nekoliko godina pokrenuli projekat sa ciljem povećanja bezbednosti i pouzdanosti rutiranja na internetu. Kevin nam je o tome pričao na trećoj rastanog konferencije, ali to je bilo otprilike deceniju u internet godinama, tako da smo pozvali Kevina da nam ispriča šta se dogodilo među vremenu i kako stvari stoji u Srbiji i regionu. Mr. Maynell, good to see you again after three years. Are you ready? Can you hear us loud and clear? Okay. I can hear you. Can you hear me okay? Yeah, and we see you okay. Great. So, okay. assuming that you're ready, I will get the start sign. So, the floor is yours. Okay, thank you very much. Enjoy. Uh, so, it was actually four years ago. I was quite shocked to learn that I was speaking at uh, RSNOG last time. Uh, and we were talking about manners amongst many other things uh, at that event. Um, but there's actually been quite a few uh, um, updates uh, since then, uh, quite a few developments, and I really wanted to focus today on the Manas Observatory tool, which I think could be quite useful for the operators community in Serbia. But just to give you a, an overview, I'm not really going to go into too much detail on the technicalities of the BGP routing system. Um, I'm talking to network operators. I'm assuming that you have a good idea of how BGP works. Um, but just to set the, uh, the scale of this, um, as of yesterday, there were nearly 73,000 um, autonomous systems that were connected to the internet. Um, obviously, as you know, they're identified by an AS number. And then um, there were just over 900,000 um, um, advertised IP prefixes, so in other words, routes on the internet. Um, the diagram on the, on the right there is an attempt to try to map uh, the relationships between all of these networks, which as you can see is quite complicated, um, and that sort of brings us to the point of uh, what MANAS is about. So the issue is that, that uh, BGP, uh, which is used by the Internet Routing System, um, it's based inherently based on unverified trust between networks. So there isn't any built-in validation that uh, routing updates are legitimate. Um, any network can announce any ASN or any IP prefix. Um, and essentially this means that any network can, can claim to be another network. Uh, and that's the inherent problem that we have um, with the routing system. Now this causes three types of problems. Um, you have a route leak, which is where a network operator um, is accident usually accidentally announcing um, to another provider that it has a route to a particular destination when that isn't the, actually the correct route for the internet. Um, as I said, it's normally a, a sort of an accidental misconfiguration, um, but this can actually be used for things like traffic inspection or uh, reconnaissance reasons. Then you have um, what's known as a route hijack. So this is actually where a network operator or an attacker is impersonating another network operator and pretending that, that um, they're a client uh, of a particular network. Um, this can cause packets to be forwarded to the wrong place and it can be used for denial of service attacks. Um, and actually quite commonly we're seeing this by some nation states are using this to, uh, for censorship reasons as well. Um, but yeah, there, there's, there's a whole variety of reasons uh, why this is taking place. And then last but not least, you have IP address spoofing. This is perhaps more commonly known um, since it's where somebody creates a, uh, an IP packet with a false source IP address, um, often for um, reflection DDoS attacks um, or, or to impersonate uh, another system. Um, so these are the sort of three common problems that you see on the global routing system. Now, you often see, sometimes you'll, you'll, you'll get, these will get into the news, get into the press, there'll be a particular uh, uh, incident. Um, I, I highlighted some of those on the previous slide. Um, but basically, these are these incidents are happening every day on the internet. Um, I can certainly log into the our observatory uh, and, and see things happening every single day. And, and this chart here shows just from I think a seven month period uh, in 2020 um, that that and this is just hijacks, not even route leaks. Um, you can see that there's there's um, uh, yeah, this is something that is it's happening all the time. So this brings us to manners. Um, so really what we're trying to do with manners is to um, bring together uh, some of the established industry best practices that, that have been developed to address um, some of these uh, problems. You know, we're not inventing anything new. Um, many of these problems have been known about for 20, 25 years. 
uh, various people have worked on various solutions to um, address this. Uh, but one of the problems that we found is that these were often poorly understood. Uh, often network operators didn't know they actually had problems. Um, and we're trying to, what we're trying to do here with Manners is, is raise awareness of the problems, but then to bring together the different packages of, uh, bring together a package of these different measures that if you uh, implement these, um, this can reduce a lot of the problems that you're seeing in the um, global router system. Perhaps, but perhaps more specifically, it's, it's a sort of statement from network operators that they're taking some shared responsibility for um, um, the resilience of the internet infrastructure. So we have uh, four programs that we're, uh, uh, that we're running at the moment. Um, these are at no cost to um, participants. Um, but obviously, there's a certain uh, criteria that we, we uh, ask um, well, network operators, IXPs, CDN and cloud providers and vendors to uh, sign up to. Um, but this is a, a, yeah, a free program um, that, that uh, we're, we're running here. But just to focus on the network operators program, because this is by far the biggest, um, we have these four actions. Um, I'm not going to go too much, into, too much into details of these because these uh, you can read all this on the website. But for example, action one is filtering. So this is about preventing propagation of incorrect routing information. Um, we have anti-spoofing action. Um, then we have a um, coordination action, which is about ensuring correct information, contact information is in the various RIR databases, and also that uh, network operators undertake to be responsive if there are incidents. And then finally, we have global validation. So this is ensuring that uh, uh, route prefixes, um, AS numbers are registered in the appropriate IRR database, or you can implement RPKI as well. Okay, so that's all very nice, but um, uh, you know what we wanted, what we're trying to do here is that we're trying to raise awareness of these problems, and we're trying to identify where these problems are. Um, so this is why we developed the uh, the Managed Observatory tool, which will help network operators check uh, for their routing security conformance. So this is a, a tool to to impartially benchmark. Um, uh, the different uh, ASs on the on the internet, um, and also to provide us, uh, you know, a, a factual state of, of you know, whether there are incidents, whether there are where the problems are, um, you know, what are the issues that, that we're seeing um, on the internet routing system. This is collating a number of different publicly available data sources. So we're drawing on third party data sources here that are well established on the internet. Um, for example, BGP Stream, um, the CIDR report that's run from by AP NIC Labs. Uh, we have the CADA spoofer database, uh, the various RIR databases. So in Europe, that would be the right database. Uh, we look into peering DB, and then we have also look at a number of internet routing registries. Um, and at the moment, we use RPKI validator, but that's going away. So we're going to introducing a new uh, uh, data source there. Anyway, just to, I'm going to sort of do this in hopefully in live and in real time um, demos, they can often go wrong. I hope this one doesn't. But what you're seeing here, so you can go to observatory.manus.org and you can get um, a lot of the sort of uh, global data, the country data, continent Pacific data. Um, and what you're looking at here is the dashboard, the, the Manus Observatory dashboard which shows you the uh, conformance scores for each of the four manners actions that I just showed. Um, the fifth circle there is actually RPKI, so that is part of action four, but we split action four into uh, internet routing registry and RPKI. So you know, generally, you know, you sort of look on the internet and you can see, well, okay, in the grand scheme of things, there's not, it doesn't look like there's too many routing problems, but of course, 1% of the internet is still quite a lot of, uh, of networks. Um, you, know, you can see that there's not all the networks have put their contact information into, uh, into various databases. Um, certainly not all of the network operators have put uh, registered their route prefixes in an IRR. And then of course, RPKI, there's quite, still quite, um, low adoption uh, globally for that. But what I can also look at is I can look at this for Southeast Europe as well. 
um, and you see the scores uh, change. Um, so these are all the countries that are defined as Southeast Europe by uh, RIPE. Um, of course, the scores look a little bit better there. Um, so it looks like every network in the region has actually registered its contact information. Um, pretty much all of the routes are registered. Um, and then um, RPKI, so there's a higher rate of RPKI adoption in um, the region as well. And what I can also do is uh, go to Serbia as well um, and look at Serbia, if I can find the right one. And um, yeah, so again, it's even better in Serbia. Um, you, you, yeah, again, more routes are registered and there's a much higher rate of RPKI adoption in Serbia as well. So it's a good, you know, it's looking pretty good. Um, but what you really want to know is, okay, what are the, what are the, you know, how are individual networks doing? Um, that, that's what you're really interested in. So we can look at all of the, um, I think there's about 150, 100, nearly 160 networks that are registered in Serbia. And um, we can actually look at their, uh, their individual uh, scores as well. Now, again, Serbia is not a good example because people are doing things pretty well in Serbia, as it turns out. I had a look and I was trying to find some bad examples and it was pretty difficult. So um, I'm, I'm going to have to go to other countries in the region to, to give them some examples of, of some of the routing problems. But, you know, for example, this network here, AS15958, um, you, you know, you, you, it's got some bogles. There's some private uh, ASNs that are being that seem to be advertised on the internet. It shouldn't be these are private ASs. They shouldn't be routed. So, but you can identify those. You know that this network has has is, is leaking these um, these ASs. But that's not you know that's not so bad. Um, so then I'm looking at um, I think it was Telecom Serbia. Um, again, they're doing things pretty pretty well. Um, yeah, this one here. Um, but I think they have some unregistered routes. They've got one and two, three unregistered routes there um, that for some reason have not been into an IRR. Um, so potentially they could show up as route leaks or, or whatever uh, at some point. But again, you often see larger operators, they don't register every prefix. So it's not really a, a particular big problem. So I then need to go really go back to, um, to another country. Um, so I can look at all the networks in Southeast Europe here. Um, if I can find um, this particular network. So it was uh, Vodafone in Albania. Um, if I can find it. What you can also do as well, you can add, uh, you can search for this um, by AS number as well. Um, it was this one here, perhaps. Um, and they had quite an interesting route uh, uh, route hijack. Um, it's not quite clear what's going on here, but this prefix actually belongs to MIT, so it's not entirely clear um, why this is being routed um, by um, Vodafone Albania. Um, but when you look at the, the, the path through the internet, it, it's, um, it, yeah, there's some interesting things going on there. It's not clear what's happening. But this actual prefix, if you go to it, this, this um, AT91124 slash 20 actually belongs to um, Vodafone Albania. And um, most of the prefixes, the sub prefixes uh, under that are actually registered to Vodafone Albania. But this one slash 24 belongs to MIT and it's not clear why this is routed. So this is possibly just an error. Uh, an error in configuration, but at least you can um, you know go and go and identify that uh, if necessary. So that uh, it helps you to show where you have problems or you may have problems uh, on your network. So that just gives you an example of some of the things that that you can do with the observatory. Um, I could go into more, but we have some limited time. But so I really want to just go to to know where we are with the, the Manners program here. Um, so at the present time, we have um, um, coming up for 800 ASNs now uh, participating in a part of the network operators program of Manners. Um, there's and that growth has been pretty high in the last uh, couple of years. So this has ramped up uh, pretty pretty significantly um, in the last eight well year to eighteen months. 
We've also got an IXP program. So we now currently have 98 IXPs, uh, managed participants in this, which is very key for the internet because obviously IXPs um, you know, have a lot of influence with their members and their local communities. Um, so that helps, uh, you know, helps uh, improve the state of browser security as well. Um, there's a CDN program. Um, I think many of the large uh, cloud and CDN providers are uh, part of that. Uh, and we very recently started a vendor program as well. So some of the larger equipment providers, um, such as Juniper, uh, are participating in that as well. Okay, so, but what impact is this having? What impact is uh, you know, Manus having on browser security? Well, it's always very, um, you know, you have to be a, to take it as a little bit of pinch of salt, statistics uh, and potential patterns. But what we have been seeing is that as uh, the number of uh, Manus participants has increased and um, as a number of networks that are you know, cleaning up their routing problems has increased, we have actually observed uh, a, a decrease in routing incidents on the internet. So it does seem to seem that as networks um, you know, improve their routing security uh, measures, um, this does have an impact on, um, you know, on actually decreasing the number of overall incidents. So that's kind of a positive sign. And this is my last uh, slide. So if, um, you're interested in participating in the Manus program, um, we'd encourage you to go to the website to um, fill in the, uh, the application form as much detail as possible. And what we can do is actually, we can actually give you an account on the Manus Observatory. So you can go and look at you know, how your network uh, is, is, is performing uh, in terms of routing security. Um, and obviously if, uh, yeah, it, it's conformant with all of the actions. Uh, we can sign you up as a, as a participant. If it isn't, we can help work through those issues and we can use the observatory to, um, uh, you know, to, to sort of identify where those, those issues are. So um, that's it from me. Um, I don't know if there's any time for questions or if there are any questions. Kevin, we actually have two questions. Uh, first of all, uh, what do you do when IRR database is not updated? Um, in, well, in terms of, sorry, the question is, if, if the network operator hasn't updated the IRR database? Is what to do when database is not updated? IRR database. Well, so, I mean, that's... It, <laughs> That that well, it, I mean, we we ask the 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 network operator to add their prefix to that, um, if if possible. It's not always possible because there's a lot of legacy stuff out there, um, so there's some issues there. Sometimes, sometimes they belong to other customers as well. It's not so easy to have that updated. Um, you know, we don't completely insist on having a hundred percent registration because we realise there's sometimes problems. Um, but we would encourage every network operator to ensure that, you know, their resources are kept updated. Um, there's some really large operators that don't keep this well updated, and that is actually quite a problem. Okay. Uh, next question is, what would you say is the uh, biggest obstacle to wider manners adoption? Awareness. It's simply about awareness. What we found is a lot of operators and actually some very, very big operators simply don't know they have a lot of these, uh, a lot of these problems. They don't know they're leaking routes. They don't know they've got unregistered prefixes. They don't know particularly about RPKI. Uh, and actually it, it's awareness. And once we point this out and once we give them the tools to show where they have the problems, uh, they become quite enthusiastic about improving the routing security. But it is absolutely, I think, just about awareness, raising awareness of this. Okay, thank you very much, Kevin. Ladies and gents, Kevin Menel, Internet Society, thank you very much.